Hello and welcome to a new edition of Inside Egypt, the program that gets you the latest political, economic and cultural events that took place here in Egypt. I'm Shina and we'll be right back after this. President Fattah Sisi starts a two-day visit on Thursday to the United Arab Emirates. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Ala Yusuf said the visit comes within the continuation of bilateral consultations and coordination. Yusuf said that the president will also attend the celebrations of the National Day of the UAE. The consultations are expected to cover means of boosting bilateral relations on all fields and ways to enhance strategic cooperation in face of the current regional challenges. The annual ICT conference was held under the auspices of President Afateh Sisi at the Cairo International Conference Center with the participation of the National Authority for Communications and a number of international, regional and local information technology companies as well as banks. Nile TV's Dina Hawedak spoke to a number of attendees and filed in the following report. Under the title, The Disruption Age, President Abdel Fattah Sisi has inaugurated the 20th round of the Cairo ISCT conference and exhibition, which is the leading technology event in the Middle East and Africa. The inauguration ceremony was attended by Minister of Communication Yasser Al Qadi, along with a number of ministers and senior officials. We want to see exactly in Egypt how uh, people use ICT first for many uh, development on the sector. And across Africa also, Egypt so, is very active in um, our organization, what we call African Telecommunication Union, in terms of the capacity building, in terms of the financial contribution. Now when you come to the impact of the ICT in, across Africa, I think we, we, we see that many things was changed because of ICT in Africa regarding the health and if you come from what people today we call digital economy because ICT contribute too much in terms of employment. Minister of Communication and Information Technology, Yasser Al-Qadi, has showcased in the beginning of the inauguration ceremony the most important activities of the Cairo ICT conference, where he mentioned the important role of the governmental institutions in supporting this conference, in addition to the contribution of a big number of international companies in the field of communication technology and real estate, as well as information security. This is very important for me, because all those innovations are not about just technical issues. They are about making ICT work for people. The ICT and people center, said people center innovation. This is great. Uh, and I'm sure that if we continue in this direction, we can use ICTs to accelerate the attainment of the sustainable development goals. The Smart Africa Initiative uh, and uh, Egypt is one of the key members of that. I'm here at this exhibition to witness the development of ICT in, in Egypt. Uh, our goal is to use the one billion citizens of Africa as a common market, and Egypt will play a key role in that. Egypt has joined as a member, and Egypt uh, uh, has a, a very good uh, uh, infrastructure program already in place. During the opening ceremony, the Minister of Communication and Information Technology has showcased the history of the ICT in Egypt up till Egypt's adoption for the 4G. Cairo ICT 2016 will be the wake-up call for traditional businesses and will also be the place to reveal the newcomers into the different markets to show the confrontation currently taking place. The 20th round of Cairo ICT, which is the biggest of its kind from the Middle East and Africa, is a very good chance for experts in the field to meet and exchange their experiences in the technology field. Dina Hoydok, Nile TV International. The cabinet headed by Prime Minister Sharif Ismail approved a draft of the new labor law. The law was referred to the State Council before submitting it to the House of Representatives. Minister of Manpower Mohammad Safan said the new law aims at protecting workers and guaranteeing their rights. The law is also expected to encourage investors. The details. A cabinet session under Prime Minister Sharif Ismail approved the new Labour Bill. 
The bill will be passed to the State Council to conduct the needed legal review before being submitted to the House of Representatives. The bill was developed as part of the government's keenness to keep up with social and economic changes experienced by the labor market in Egypt. Its philosophy aims at building a balanced working relationship between the two parties of the production process, as well as securing the workers' rights. It develops solutions for all problems that resulted from the practical application of the current law and helps create an attractive investment environment. Also, the Cabinet approved a new bill amending the second paragraph of Article 12 of Law No. 152 for the year 1980 on the establishment of the Egyptian National Railways, the ENR. The amendment authorizes the Transport Minister in coordination with the ENR's board to issue the prices list of transporting goods by railways. It aims at providing appropriate flexibility to increase ENR's competitiveness and increasing its share in the transport of goods compared to the current situation in which rates of goods transported by railways do not exceed 1.2% of the total volume of goods. Egypt's parliament on Tuesday approved a bill on the regulation of non-governmental organizations and sent it to President Fatah Sisi to sign into law. Lawmakers gave the text final approval after making some amendments. Their details. The law aimed at regulating the operations of NGOs in the country. The law drafted by Parliament's Social Solidarity Committee will give the existing NGOs one year to adjust their legal conditions instead of the six months as it was proposed in an earlier draft last week. The law, which was reviewed in legal and constitutional terms by the State Council, also stipulates that the President will be exclusively empowered with naming the Secretary-General of the National Foreign NGOs Regulating Body, which would regulate the operations of foreign NGOs in Egypt and monitor all their sources of foreign funding. The Parliament Speaker Ali Abdelayel told MPs that the State Council recommended that Article 75 of the law be amended to indicate in clear terms how the Secretary General of the new body will be named. The law, according to Article 70, stipulates that foreign NGOs seeking to operate in Egypt must secure prior approval from the new body. Article 70 stipulates that the new body would carry out its duties under the jurisdiction of the Cabinet. The regulatory body will take charge of overseeing all the activities of foreign NGOs in Egypt, including all forms of their cooperation with governmental and non-governmental institutions inside the country, as well as supervising all forms of foreign funding given to local Egyptian NGOs and civil society organizations. After gaining the approval of the overwhelming majority of MPs, Abdel Ayel said that Egypt's parliament has taken a historic move towards regulating the operations of NGOs on a new basis that would safeguard national security and prevent chaos. The 89 article NGOs law gained initial approval from MPs in a plenary session on the 15th of November, after which it was referred to State Council Affiliated Department of Legislation and Fatwas to be revised in constitutional and legal terms. The head of Parliament's pro-government coalition Support Egypt said that the law would help NGOs operating in Egypt to focus on development activities. He added that Parliament drafted the new law while keeping in mind proposals from the State Council and the General Union of NGOs. Minister of International Cooperation uh, Sahar Nasr headed a high-level delegation for the second International Conference on Partnership for the Developmental Cooperation uh, being held in Kenya. Nasr delivered Egypt's speech before the conference focusing on the economic empowerment of women and youths and present Egypt's vision for 2030. The conference aims at discussing enhancing international developmental cooperation and boosting sustainable development. 
The two-day conference brings together more than 100 representatives of international organizations, 1,500 leaders of development schemes from around the world. Earlier, Nasr signed a deal on supporting energy sector in Egypt with a number of European partners. Another deal was signed on establishing a wind farm. Nile TV's correspondent Nada Brahim Wadderan conducted the following interview with the Minister of International Cooperation, Dr. Sahar Nasr. Uh, today we have signed with the French Agency for Development uh, major agreements regarding energy, the electricity sector. This is a sector that uh, we give a lot of uh, emphasis on. It takes priority. As we heard it from the parliamentarians today that uh, were present in, in the ceremony, that this is a priority sector. It's a strategic area. Uh, without the, the sufficient energy and the different governor rates, you'll not be able to attract investors in industrial uh, zones development. Uh, it is very important also for, for the Egyptian families. So we're very happy to have this signed. So it's a, a total of 50 million euros for this uh, project in Delta. But there is also uh, budget support uh, that is earmarked to the energy sector amounting to 150 million euros. And this is um, a parcel of uh, a lar large um, engagement with the IFD, mainly uh, 1.6 uh, million euro, billion euros. And this is very important because it focuses on utilities, but also addresses other sectors that are related to small and medium enterprises. Uh, to create jobs for young people, microfinance, which is also very important, especially in rural areas for, for women. And uh, a, a third sector that we are also um, uh, requesting uh, further partnership is on transportation. The, the one in the Suez Gulf is, is on, uh, on, it's a wind farm. Uh, the Minister of uh, Electricity is very keen on the diversification of the sources of energy. So, and he has also uh, launched a, a renewable energy strategy that uh, has tar that is targeting uh, by the year 2022 20% 20, uh, uh, renewable energy. So, there, he is aiming on diversification, whether through solar or wind. And hence, um, we will be signing also the wind farm, the Suez, uh, Suez Gulf wind farm uh, station, which is also a, a, a major milestone in the sector, and we're very happy. And this is a good example of great partnership between the French, the Germans, and the EU. And this is what the, the Ministry here of International Cooperation is trying to do, is we are, we are after an integrated development solution. So we're, instead of having different ad hoc interventions from different donors, we're bringing them together to support the, uh, the program that Egypt has launched. Egypt is to issue the 2.5 to 3 billion US dollars a euro bonds in January. Finance Minister Amr El Garhi said in a press conference that Egypt will issue the euro bonds in January. He said that the delay of the issuance was due to the disturbance in global capital market. The details. Finance Minister Amr El Garhi said in a press conference that Egypt will issue 2.5 to 3 billion denominated euro bonds in the global bond markets in the first half of January. In a press statement from the Ministry, El Garhi attributed the delay in the Eurobond issuance originally planned for the second half of November to the disturbance in the global capital markets resulting from the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. The minister added that another batch of dollar-denominated Eurobonds will be issued in the second half of 2017. Al Garhi has said previously that bond sales could reach five billion US dollars depending on the investors' appetite for purchase. The finance ministry announced in August that four international investment banks were selected by Egypt to issue the dollar denominated euro bonds. On the dues owed to the government by foreign oil companies, the minister stressed that the government is respecting its commitments and ensuring that its partner companies will continue to make new investments in the sector, adding that repayment will take place in the upcoming period without giving further details. On the decision to liberate the pound against foreign currencies, which took place early this month, al Garhi said that the decision has yielded better results than expected, as the foreign investments and bonds reached 500 million US dollars by November 20, exceeding 
2010 levels. He added that after the liberalization of the pound brings tangible results, the inflation rate will decline by up to 10% over the second half of 2017. The central bank of Egypt decided to liberalize the pound and raise key interest rates as part of its set of reforms aimed at alleviating the dollar shorted, eradicating the black market and stabilizing the economy. Now, dear viewers, we'll have a look at the Tourism magazine, which brings us interesting news related to tourists and attractive destinations here in Egypt with Abir Mitwali. Within the government's tourism promotional campaigns, Luxor and Aswan are the two destinations that may be neglected the most, even though both have suffered greatly from the decline in tourism. To counter this, the private sector in the two cities is studying ways to target the European market, especially Germany and England, by the end of September. The private sector aims to contract with tour operators and airline to begin negotiations for charter flights. Tharwat al Agami, chairperson of the hotel's chamber in Luxor, said that the private sector in the two provinces will organize self-funded promotional campaigns in Europe. During excavation cleaning work carried out in the tomb of the 25th dynasty Thebes mayor Karshaben is South Assasif on Luxor's West Bank. The Egyptian-American South Assasif conservation project discovered his burial chamber and sarcophagus. Mahmoud Afifi, head of the ancient Egyptian antiquities department at the Ministry of Antiquities, said that the sarcophagus is a unique example of Kashet sarcophagi in the elite tomb, adding that the sarcophagus is carved in plain red granite and doesn't bear any engravings on paintings. Elina Bishkovoka, director of the archaeological mission, explained that the burial chamber was found accidentally during excavation work carried out in a room of the tomb. Well, that's all for today's edition of Inside Egypt. I'm Shina Adel. Thank you for watching.